I have always loved to draw. I always loved to sew and make things. And, um, but we didn't have an art class in elementary school. And, but I had several really good friends who loved to draw too. And we all used to draw together. And we used to sit on the floor and draw for hours and hours and hours. I think that was my first training. <laughs> we, you know, that peer interaction. I think the mosaics on the subways, going back and forth to school on the subway, and just the street signs and the names of the streets was so interesting. And I think maybe that was my first exposure to mosaics. Making mosaics, I didn't start till, I guess after I f finished school. I was teaching art in the Philadelphia schools. I took a class at the University of Art. That got me started. And I love clay. Clay is wonderful. It, you can do so many things with clay. This was a mosaic mural we did at my last school, Gompers Elementary. And the kids, you know, I would grab them out of the lunchroom and before and after school, and we would stick a few tiles up. The kids loved it. It was so messy. It was horrible. <laughs> but they loved it so much. Play. I love paint. I paint too. <laughs> and um, you know, I incorporate everything together, but my favorite material is junk. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. Because, you know, nobody wants it and it's gonna end up in a landfill if I don't rescue it. <laughs> I, I've always liked to recycle. I've always liked to use scrap materials. And it occurred to me that I could use uh, scrap plastic. I mean, <clears throat> some things can be recycled commercially, but uh, certain things are not recyclable. And I had this tray, it was a huge, one of those um, catering trays, and I um, scored it and started to just put scraps of things together. These are all made from scrap plastic from credit cards, bottle caps, uh, plastic bottles, plastic jars. My father passed away. He left a wealth of junk in his basement. <laughs> and it was like, oh, Dad, you just really, I inherited this wonderful assortment of <laughs> all kinds of stuff. So all of it goes into my work. The sky, the trees. <laughs> Every artist I've ever seen, from the bad ones to the magnificent ones, there's something that's inspiring about every single artist because it's, they're pouring out their soul, you know? And you learn something about a person from their art. You can see something that's going on that they're communicating in a way that you can't communicate with words. That's what art is. It's, it's a form of communication that words cannot express. The same with music. That music is a great inspiration because, um, well, I used to listen to a lot of jazz in my formative years, <laughs> and so much of it is improvisational, and that is where I picked up, you know, just doing work almost like stream of consciousness. I don't really do a lot of planning. <laughs> I don't measure out things just go for it <laughs> and it develops and evolves in its own way. I think you can make a living as an artist, but you do have to sacrifice something if you do that. I never wanted to be an artist for money because I didn't want to sacrifice artistic freedom. I wanted to do, you know, explore in my own way and that's not always marketable. There are a number of people who are very successful at doing that. And their work is beautiful too. But to me, that is confining. Of course, there are a lot of art-related careers that don't uh, necessarily involve making art. But I think you can make a living if you're willing to follow the guidelines. I'm a little undisciplined in that area. Thank <laughs> you.